We've had many days now of recruiting people, sitting around stagnating more or less, not really getting much done. Um, well, kind of getting much done, but not, not getting much expansion in terms of the base, not getting much building, not, not really building this medieval settlement I set out to build. So, with all of the finest geographical, uh, cartographical, and drawing skills at my fingertips, I've come up with a blueprint for uh, the greatest base you've ever done seen in RimWorld. Honestly... Like peeling back the mantle here, jokes aside, this is just a very, very, very basic plan. I'm kind of hoping if any of you out there have even a modicum of, of talent, or uh, which is still far more than I have, or are, are a, very, a very talented individual uh, and have some pointers, some better suggestions, or could even draw something far more better than what I've come up with here. Honestly, don't don't get your hopes up. It's, there it is. It's terrible. It's fucking terrible. I did it in Photoshop in about two minutes. Um... Just because I wanted to at least get a plan down so that we had something to work to and then we can improve and work on it together. So that's the plan for the base. This represents the entire map. Um, it's just occurred to me that I've, I've drawn the road. Oh, you know what? The road's okay. It's not massively accurate. It's a bit more diagonal than I drew uh, initially there. Um, but essentially, this, what you're looking at on your screen now, is what I'm going to draw the base as. Or how I'm going to aim to build the base. So, ideally... I'll go over the different districts and, and sort of this will be our final ideal base. We've got in red there the upper class district, the King Bonnet Bigley district for only the bigliest of big boys. We have next door to that in blue, in dark blue, we have on the right hand side to the east, um, we have the middle class district. For everybody here who has proven themselves, I think Pots, Patches, Jimbo, The Dog, Deep Sea, uh, Reginald, Elkip, Egas and Moss, who will be renamed, all get... Uh, a house within that middle class district and then we've got the low class district there in pink for the lowest of the low the scum the useless ones who didn't really help out building this but they are still there in the north we have in in the yellow in the very north of the map we have the farms very straightforward to the south of that in a very slightly different color that's still kind of yellow but a little more orangey that's where the marketplace is going to be we have lots of different stores lots of different stockpiles reason for that is orion's hospitality mod allows you to set up shopping zones so that the ai can come over and buy things from you so we can use shelves to sort of have you know dedicated weapon seller or fruit and vegetable seller i think that'd be really really awesome we've got in light blue, that's going to be the guard area. So this is north of the red area where Bonnet Bigley lives. We're going to have the guard area, which is where guards and rhinos will be stored for battle. Um, next door to that, in the sort of lilac color, we have, um, and the square as well with the, the lilac center, that is supposed to represent our our holy stone of destiny, the holy rock. Um, that's going to be our sort of religious area where we're going to build a big old cathedral. And then in... Um, in the very top left-hand corner of the map, you see we have, like, that little outlined area. That's where, that's going to be for, like, caravan parking and stuff, for us to make caravans and send them off. But that's the general idea I've got right now. The only thing we're missing with that is, like, a dungeon. So I figured we could attach that to the actual guard base. Have, like, a sort of prisoner camp. We could even put it outside the wall, uh, sort of north of where Bonnet Bigley's red estate is. That's the plan. If you guys, like I said, if any of you have a modicum of talent, uh, which I clearly do not, then... Have, give, give, give your hand at something better. If you just have any suggestions in the comments, let me know. And that's the plan. I want about a massive SimCity-style SimCity, um, simulation city. And I think that'd be pretty goddamn cool. Oh, I didn't think of anywhere to put, like, an inn or a, or a house. Hmm. We'll cross that hurdle when we get there. Anyway, you've got to bear in mind, that map made it look much more than it is. We've got so much area to work with. We've got all of this, and this would be sort of the equivalent of that sort of little bit of purple that I put on the map, sort of the, uh, the lilac area. That would be all of this area already. So it's going to be huge when we get it done. If we get it done. We've also got to, you know, still fight the regular threats Rimworld's going to throw at us. But I just wanted to plan out there so that we could at least start working on that. And you know what? Start working on that. We're going to goddamn do. So what can we build these walls out of then in the old style walls mod? Because I really, really like the way they look. Um, we can make them out of wood, naturally. Or we can build them out of uh, silver, gold, steel. Steel seems a bit too much. Um, wooden, any sort of stone. We can make them out of adobe. What, it, it depends how strong are adobe bricks, because you're just making that out of hay, right? So I'd imagine they wouldn't have much durability. Uh, max hit points 350 compared to the regular wooden wall, which gives us 250, so it's actually not much better at all. I think what we would need then... Can we not build them out of granite blocks? That would be ideal. Um, granite wall. Holy shit, we can. And how many hit points do those have? Yeah, 425. I think stone walls outside of the entire base would be would be pretty pretty cool. Um, rather than building it out of wood or something cheap like that. We can build the actual houses out of wood or bamboo or anything like that. Just because it looks fairly nice. What is a bamboo? Oh man, that looks like a really nice material for building houses out of. I might use that one instead then. 
Um, and we'll obviously Bamboo Wards also give a Beauty Bonus. I don't know if this one does in particular. Uh, it does. Beauty of 3 compared to the regular stone or wood wall here, which gives a Beauty of 1. That's cool. So building up Bamboo Wards everywhere will make the place look very, very nice as well. The flower Walls. Man, this mod had so much cool shit. Like, it's, we're going to have a proper little medieval salmon here rather than just a stand, standard sort of crappy Rimworld square base that I usually norm normally build. I want to I wanna go back to the sort of classic old Minecraft days of building big settlements back in, like, what, 20, 2010 was Minecraft? Oh, my God, that was ages ago. Um, anyway, so... In terms of uh, actual gameplay here, rather than building, we have our boys, uh, Mos, Egas, and Reginald Lelsip, uh, Elkip, on a mission. I'm going to pronounce the name different every single time. Out on a mission to go and get ourselves an Orb of Souls. One of you had the best idea I've ever heard. So we have the Orb of Discord, what's it called? Orb of Conviction, that was it. So the Orb of Conviction we can use on anything to immediately convert to our side. One of you said, use it on a dragon. And that's absolutely genius. Imagine that, Bonnet Bigly on dragon back, surrounded by an army of rhino uh, riding warriors. I think that's such a cool plan. So we are definitely gonna try and do that. We'll save it for when the next dragon turns up, unless we find some like godly character. You know, maybe if Elrang or the Everqueen or something turns up, then maybe then I could be convinced. Oh shit, they're gonna get there. They're gonna get there today. They've only got a couple more hours of traveling, so probably not. Caravan arrived at Isom Stash. All right, let's see what we've got then. Um, this is going to be an ambush. 100% this is going to be an ambush. There is a very small building, and that's it. Right, so we have our healer. We have, obviously, our DPSer, and we have... Uh, you guys who I didn't send with any armor at all, because I'm a fool. Right, okay. Uh, let's get behind the building, because I imagine we are going to get ambushed pretty quickly here. Um, we could always grab the item and just run, which might not be a bad strategy here. Um... Let's just claim it and then walk in. There we go. And pick up Orb of Souls. So what does the Orb of Souls actually do? Let's take a look here. It's a powerful and dangerous artifact. It requires no external power and can extract the soul of a pawn possessing traits. If successful, the Orb of Souls will absorb up to three traits from the target. The target will lose those traits. The process is almost always lethal. Once filled, it can be used to transfer the absorbed traits into another human-like pawn. What? No. So we... This is cool. So we could get a load of prisoners, literally suck the power out of them, and transfer all of their power to Bonnet Bigly. So it just takes up to three traits from the target. I wonder if it's random or we get to pick. Oh, I have no idea. That's crazy. Abilities, devour soul. Go and grab this. I was kind of hoping we'd be able to just permanently remove souls from people. Um, oh man, there was there really nothing here? Was there actually no enemies at all? Holy shit, so we, we just grab this free thing and then... Fuck it. Threats unknown. Yeah, reform the caravan. Get the hell out of there, team. So we've got ourselves the Orb of Souls. Naturally, we're going to take that one. Uh, don't take the trunks. We've still got 4.5 days of food. Not including the actual forage per day as well. Jesus. Okay. Um, go out to base then. We'll get back, drop that off, and actually send them to go and get the next orb as well. That was incredibly good. I love the idea of, of sucking all the souls out of our enemies and giving them to Bonnet and just sort of turning them into this actual god king. I love the idea that he's sort of this incompetent dude that stumbles across a very, very powerful magic artifact and then becomes insanely powerful. I'm really, really glad I built that second icebox, actually. Look at this corn. Spoils in four years. Rice. Spoils in 1.9 years. 2.8 years. What about the Lembus? 5.1 years worth of Lembus. This was a really, really great idea, building a couple of iceboxes. That was, that was a good plan, Brain. Right, so what we want to do then is see if we can't make ourselves some Lembus bread, seeing as that is apparently... Um, apparently Lembus requires one Elvish bread. Can last for months. Is it not, like, incredibly nutritious, though? Um, 0 0.92, yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. Compared to, say, Cram, which is 0 0.5. So Lembus, supposedly, you eat a slice and, or you eat a little bit and it fills your stomach. Um, so we want to do then, grind Lembus flour, grind bulk Lembus flour. How do we make... Make Elven Bread Loaf requires 8 Lembus Flour. So, um, what's the lowest common multiple of 5 and 8? It's gonna be like, um, oh god, don't do this to me. Wait, 8 and 50. Was it not 50 making the loaf? Yeah, it was 50. I thought it was. I was gonna say that. That's incredibly obvious. So, if we do 400 Lembus Corn. Right, I'm pretty sure that's right then. So, so Grind Bolt Lembus Flour will give us 200, uh, Lembus Flour. And then it's 8 Lembus Flour per bread, so that should be 25 loaves of bread, right? 8 into 200. Something like that. Anyway, it doesn't matter too much if it's wrong. Um, details, let's go ahead and pause when satisfied. Do, or do we always want Lembus flour? You know, if we've only got like 50 Lembus flour left, oh no, it needs to be a multiple of, of 8, I guess. Um, oh no, this one's multiple of 50, so 50 is fine. Um, if we've only got 50 left, grind out another 50. Bake Elven Bread Loaf. 
So that is due until we've got... Ah, it doesn't really matter too much, eh? Uh, doing, if we've only got five elven bread left, then you can do that. And then prepare Lembus is just... I don't know why we have to prepare it again. That's kind of annoying. Um, specifically prepared slices of... Oh, I guess we're just slicing it and portioning it. I suppose if you ate an entire loaf of elven bread, you'd be kind of screwed. And then that's just one to one, right? So we'll go ahead and do 25 with that one as well. Um, do until we have 25. What we could do is actually set it so the Lembus is the one that pauses on completion and then only have them grind the bulk and, and elven bread loaf when we're starting to run low on Lembus. Doesn't matter too much. Um, like I said, we'll just do it when we've got five left. Five left and bolt Lembus on 50. There we go. That should be good. And we'll see if this stuff, this should, stuff should be incredible. This should be like revolutionary. Doesn't mean we need so much rice then. We could really cut down on our harvest a little bit now. Um, seeing as they're spending a lot of time doing that. I'd recommend actually probably completely getting rid of all the rice. Just because it lasts less than corn. It's less nutritious than corn. Um, you know, that series I did a couple of... What was it? The, the first one, The Cult of Igor, where I did my whole uh, nutrition sheet to sort of check things. I feel like rice is just not worth it at this stage. Once we've done our initial bumper rice crop to keep this going, we might as well just do corn all in. Um, the only time that obviously fails is if we get like a big old blight or the crops burn or something like that, but that's not going to happen because I'm really good at Rimworld, <clears throat> is what I would tell myself lyingly. Um, let's get rid of all of this rice then. We don't need that anymore. Might as well harvest, uh, we might as well just do cut plants, eh? Get rid of all of it. Um, anything that we can harvest will automatically be harvested from that. These boys are almost home, then we're going to send them off on their next quest to go and get the Orb of Conviction. Now, apparently the Orb of Conviction is single use, whereas this Orb of Discord, no, it's not called that, the Orb of, Orb of Consumption, the Orb of Big Suck, whatever the hell it was called, is apparently multiple use. So Bonnet Bigler is going to be a very OP dude. I feel like this is something kind of evil about what we're doing right now. <gasps> there it is. The first loaf of Lembus, Mr. Frodo. Suppose in... 40 days? That doesn't seem very good. I mean, it's not a big deal, but holy shit, I was kind of expecting it to last longer than that, seeing as they went to Mordor and back with, with loaves of Lembus. Um, not back, obviously. They, they almost got to Mordor with loaves of Lembus. Uh, Deep Sea Moss, Egas, they are back. Welcome. Come and drop that stuff off. Let's see what you've got then. Oh, they bring back all the... Man, we're going to have to expand the freezer. That's, that's a good problem to have. Honestly, that's a great problem to have. Hopefully, the ice bots can keep it all cool. I might also... Um, do this as well so that we can double the barrel of the freezer so it stops it's a little more insulated that way a group of bandits from the bandit dwarfs have arrived hello oh god damn they've got oh i thought those were guns then they've all got axes okay that's a bigger raid and i'm a little bit concerned right squad up holy shit that's a lot of dwarfs um has everyone got gear so you really need some friggin armor my dude uh everybody's got a weapon right so moss has an axe deep sea has an axe you have a halberd Reginald L. Sip has a Dwarven Warhammer. We've got the dog with a bow. You guys have been saying that Patches is a wimp. Um, which I... He absolutely is. He's a wimp. I never even noticed. Patches is weak and cowardly. So, a little pain to mobilize him. And that's me saying every single time, why the hell did he go down so quickly? Turns out he's actually just a massive, massive loser wimp. Okay, fair enough. Um, explains a lot. So, Patches needs to stay at the back with a bow then. Essentially at all times. Uh, so that he's not completely wiped out. How the hell are we going to deal with this many dwarves? We could sort of take this area. It seems like a fairly... Oh no, they're going to get here long before that. Um, let's hide behind here then, I guess. Oh Jesus, no, they're going to get here long before that as well. Get behind these rocks. Here we go. Alright, we're in. Hacker voice. Oh, Patches is instantly down. Classic Patches. Right, uh, search and destroy. There we go. Right, get in there, team. Let me control them somewhat. That's it. Flank him. That's good. Let yourself get flanked as well. I found that helps out a lot. Oh, I think we're going to absolutely smash him. Yeah, I don't need to be worried about this. Yeah, you better run, Gimli. You better run. Take them all out, team. Holy shit, look at this. It's a, it's a massacre. And there was me worried then for a second. <laughs> look at this poor dude. No, let him run. Let him run. Let him go. He's not worth it. Stromfer is still alive. He has high intellectual. Might be a good researcher. High social as well. Good melee. Good mining. We also have Balin, who's fairly good with plants. Do we want to capture these two? I think we want to capture these two. Why the hell not? Um, so let's go ahead and, and put down another sleeping spot for prisoners. Um, furniture and sleeping spot. We get a lot of dwarfs. Mainly because, you know, one of the enemy factions is dwarf bandits. Um, or, or the, I should say the main enemy faction we've got nearby is obviously dwarf bandits. So all of rescue patches. What's wrong with him? What do you think actually happened? Oh, to be fair, he did get cut in the torso by an axe. To his credit, I'd probably collapse on the floor if I was cut in the torso with an axe. Wimp or not. Right, capture him. Uh, Pots can capture Barlin. Are you alright? Are you gonna be... Yeah, okay, he's only been cracked and bruised. He's fine. Minor break risk. Uh, Egas is very upset for some reason. Deepsea is apparently running off. 
As you would. Why the hell not? He's, he's, gonna, he's going to go and hide. I need to probably turn that off as well if we've got ourselves with, um... If we've got ourselves characters that search and destroy. I feel like having them set to flee is probably not helping that out. Spirit tended. I don't know if you caught that in time. Holy shit. Spirit tended. Oh! Right, because he was hit via uh, Reginald L. Kipp's spirit. Right, spirit, spirit attack. Um, when it says spirit tended, I thought he like sat there and gave him a, you know, put, put on some soul music or something. Jesus. Okay, fine. Um, how are we doing that in terms of levels? That's the one thing I did want to check, see if we can level up any of our boys. He's almost ready to level up. It's very, very close. And the other one was Mos as well, right? He's also capable of doing magic. He's really crappy. It's going to be wild. Oh, hang on. You could use your heal magic. Let's test this out. Um, in fact, you could use it on yourself, seeing as apparently you're bleeding out in a few hours. Do heal on yourself. Did that, did that help? Bleeding out in 15 hours instead. Heal on yourself. Oh, you know what? We can spam this much more than I thought we could. I thought we could only do this... The way it implied was sort of a daily thing. But in fact, we can do this quite frequently. Where's he, where's he ran off to? Hey, come back here. I'm trying to heal you up. Boom, there we go. He's done. Good as new. That's very good power. That's an incredibly good power. Well fed. Elvish bread. Pain times 90%. Oh, man. Seriously? So the elvish bread not only gives us... Um, yeah, a great nutrition there. Pain times 90%, consciousness plus 10%, moving. Was that elvish bread though, rather than lembus bread? Because that might make things slightly different here. Um, I am putting another door there to stop letting out so much heat because they are letting out a shit ton of heat. I'm, I'm triple barreling this thing. Um, I think it's entirely necessary in that case to have the outer door in hindsight brain. Uh, let's get rid of that one. Cancel that one. Get rid of those, that's fine. We could probably get rid of this one as well then. Uh, just because we've got this sort of internal um, chamber here to stop the heat escaping so quickly. There we go. I see. Right, so the way it works is that we can keep Elvish bread around, which gives us bonuses, or we can turn it into Lembus, which lasts for years and years and years. So what I think, then, is probably the better thing to do is just probably not turn it into Lembus, right? Just make Elven bread instead. Uh, seeing how ridiculously powerful that is, it's probably not a bad plan. And in fact, I'm going to go as far to remove meals. Because if we've got Lembus, who the hell cares about regular meals, right? Um... We've still got meals being made on this one, but I'd rather this one be specifically for making lemmas than have one specifically for making just regular old meals. And you know what? I'm even going to go get rid of fine meals as well. What's the point of making fine meals if we can make lavish meals for the opinion bonus or elven bread, which apparently gives them like a movement bonus as well? It's like disgustingly powerful stuff. And in fact, I'm almost tempted to make the lemmas harvest much, much bigger. Get out of here, corn. No more corn. Only lemmas. Yeah, that... Wait, what? Hang on. Take two. Uh, no more corn. Only Lembus. Yes, there we go. Okay, that's, that's probably a little bit ridiculous. And then what we can do is uh, completely phase out corn. Corn is corn is for ridiculous, uh, filthy humans. We don't need that anymore. We've got way too much cotton, I think. Oh, wait, hang on. Half of that is heal root. Oh, that's fine then. That's good. I'm trying to cut down on what we, what we really don't need here. There we go. The murder miner has apparently developed more skills while he was asleep. Is that how that works? So, what was I trying to go for? It was it was double tap, right, to increase the amount of hate. Yeah, there we go. Because that's what he's limited by right now. His hate always tends to be quite low. Uh, he seems to only generate that via melee combat. So, the more he can generate, the better. Because, obviously, it means he can use his, his quite powerful abilities a lot more frequently. So, I'm going to get rid of the flaws just to, uh, you know, sort of force reduce the... Uh, so, I'm not tempted to plant more crops. Simply because I think it'll look, look a, bit, a little bit nicer. It gives us a bit more room to do things with. And plus, you know, they're wasting so much time harvesting a ridiculous amount of crops that, honestly, we don't need. Uh, the the best way to manage food, I find, is only grow what you need. Don't overgrow it, because that's time that you're wasting where they could be doing far more jobs. It's good to have a little bit extra in reserve, but when we've got 5,000 corn, 2,000 rice, you, you know, like an absurd amount of um, quite powerful bread, we've got like pemmican and cactus fruit, it's kind of a bit of a waste of time. I, I was kind of freaking out more about food than I should have been at the very start of the game, but this should be more than enough, especially with this much lembus too. So let's see what we can sell to our dwarf friends. So according to you guys, the components are actually useful for building dwarven machinery, which in hindsight makes a lot of sense. Um, have you guys got any armor? They absolutely do. Um, Golden Hill Dwarf Lord Helm. Holy shit. Um, worn by a dwarf lord from the hill clans. It's 30,000 gold. I mean, heavy fur flexing Galadrim helmet. Excellent. Sounds pretty useful. Gives movement speed, melee hit chance. Oh my god, that's insane. Plus 10 melee damage per second. What, though? I mean, obviously, I'm going to buy that. It's 600 silver, so that's almost nothing. Wild boar armor. We have a wild boar. Holy shit, absolutely. Well, I mean, it's not a wild boar. It's a, it's a tame boar. It's, it's, a, it's an unwild boar. We'll buy the Zormat as well, because those are incredibly useful. Um, hey, that worked out incredibly well. Are you serious? That, that Am I reading that right? Hang on. 
So it gives... Well, well, well I want to see it. Right. So it gives 150 hit points to, to the gear. It's got 110% move speed, 118% melee hit chance, 82%. So they hit faster. They hit a lot harder. I'm not sure whether the percentage is uh, additive or multiplicative. That's the word I was trying to say. There we go. Um, I assume... Huh. I mean, that'd be kind of ridiculous if you were getting 124%. On top of everything else here. Anyway, well, let's buy it. Let's buy it. And let's give it to, obviously, our our greatest warrior, uh, Sir Reginald. Let's sell them some crap. Do you guys want... Can I interest you in some rice? Because we have so much of the stuff. In fact, I did want to start building up some silver. I'm going to sell them some corn as well. Oh, God. Uh, do you want 2,000 corn? That's too much corn. 1,932 corn. That's still way too much corn. 1,820 corn. That's... Still too much gone. Jesus Christ. 1,700. There you go. Um, and we'll say 1720. There you go. You're more than welcome. Um, I do want your lot. I, I want all of their silver. I don't just want some of their silver. I want all of it. How do we put the armor on the boar? How do we put the armor on the boar, though? Um, de detail? How do we put the armor on the boar? So we've got animals. Wild boar one. Um, what do we What do we do with that? Prioritize hauling. Pick up and haul. How do I put it on the boar? I have absolutely no idea. Well, apparently no one has anything left to do now besides working the quarry, which is great because the quarry is how we're going to bring in the most of our stone blocks here for producing our walls. 96 slate. So I'm going to probably just build the walls out of slate then, seeing as that's what our quarries can dig up. Um, slate gives. Uh, I assume there's no difference between slate and granite in terms of the actual wall strength. Um, so slate wall gives us uh, 455. Okay, granite walls give us... Um, 595, okay, granite is, is way stronger. Um, kind of a pain in the ass then, okay, fine. Slate will look nicer, I will admit, but if the granite is better, then I kind of would prefer them to start making us some granite blocks, so we'll do that one instead. So why don't we go to Stonecutter's table? Um, oh, one of you said use the artist table, um, to uh, produce one of those God King thrones. That's exactly what we need inside Don Bonnet's, like, great hall. It's not just gonna be a big palace for him, it'll be like a big court as well, sort of a, t a traditional medieval court. Why the fuck does Jimbo the Second have the ability to devour soul? Did he seriously use the orb for his own nefarious... Seriously? He, he just picked up the orb, and I, there was nothing I could have done about that besides forbidding it the second it... I didn't realize that the dude was just going to pick it up and it was going to infinitely give him this ability. I thought that it was like an item that you would pick up and use like a ranged weapon, but I guess not. Um, well, that's a little bit shit. Okay. Um, is there no way I can, can get rid of this? Can, can you not, though? Shit. Okay, well, hilarious. Well done, Jimbo. I guess you're the one who fucking gonna suck up the power out of people now. I'm really annoyed by that. Um, I kind of wanted to test this out, to be honest with you. So let's take a look. Xenopho, Brawler, Quick Sleeper, all sound... Okay. Uh, greedy, f physically adept. Okay, I guess we'll go and steal Stromfer's traits here. Go on then, Devour Soul. Boom. Oh, he dropped on the floor. <gasps> there we go. Okay, uh, he hasn't died. Although he has gone berserk, that's fine. Okay, that works out really, really well, because now Bonnet can come and pick this up, and hopefully... There we go. He's, oh my god, he didn't die, though. Well, that worked out incredibly well. Get him back to bed. Now, normally they die from it, according to the orb, but that's worked out insanely well for us, then. Bonnet can pick up the orb still. Um, hey, does that mean he now gets his abilities? Enchanted? Okay, that's fine, then. I, I was going to get annoyed if, if Jimbo you know, used the orb and it permanently gave him the stuff, but it actually just fills the orb. So that's, that's far more forgivable. Thank you, Jimbo. Shall we infuse the traits inside the orb into Bonnet Bigly? So what has he got right now? Let's go, um, does it replace his traits? He's got Iron World Magically Gifted Sanguine. If it replaces his traits, that would be fucking terrible. Um, can I not? Can we put that back on the floor and I can test it with someone else? Hang on, I guess we have to go to... There we go. That explains why... I could... Okay, you know what? That, that's a couple of mods not working together. Understandable, the RPG mod doesn't have a souls uh, option. So, who's got crappy traits? We know Patches has just fucking terrible traits, because he's got Wimp. So, if this, a Wimp and Pyromaniac. So, this seems like a really good way to test this, and see if we can't get rid of that. Um, right, so, Infuse Soul on Patches. Boom! And has he lost his... No, he's Wimp, Pyromaniac, and now just a Xenophobe as well. Okay, that did not work out well. We could... Could we suck the, the, the stuff out of him, then? Because seeing as that didn't actually kill him... Um, we could pull the, the traits out of Patches and just sort of blast them into one of these crappy prisoners. And actually just do a factory reset on, on Patches. That seems like a good idea. Let's do it. Um, where's my orb? Did someone else pick up the orb? Where, where's the orb? Oh, was that it? Was it single use? 
What a disappointing saga. Um, great. So now we've infused Jason Bourne with Xenophobe. Well, that was worth it. I feel like that was worth our massive adventure to go and get that. Alpaca man hunting alpaca. However, will we survive? There's four of them. Okay, fair enough. You know what? I think Reginald L. Kip can single-handedly take them out with this an insanely... He's got an insanely powerful helmet. He's got an insanely powerful hammer, right? Send this boy in. I think he can solo it. I genuinely believe he can solo it. Spite. Yes, spite that alpaca. Let them come close. Look at that. Instantly downed one. He's going to grave blade. Whenever he's ready. There we go. And he apparently healed from that as well. Oh, because he's got that vampirism power. This dude is so strong. This dude might be the most powerful man who's ever lived. No alpaca will ever stun... Andy stun them as well because of that other ability he's got. This is, a, this is a hell of a showdown. Okay, a little bit disappointing he didn't instantly kill that one, seeing as he's got a massive friggin' warhammer. There we go. And he's healing up as well. Look at that, 90% health. 91% health. And he's got so much hate. This is cool. This is this is really, really cool. The wild boar is wearing the armor. I was like, what the hell is that giant, horrible, maggoty thing in our base? The, the wild boar is put on the armor. I don't know how the hell it did. I guess it's just... I guess the wild boar just has to put it on itself. I, I feel like the, it's just how the game mechanic would work. I didn't actually see it, but that's kind of cool. Um, especially as I didn't set up a specific outfit there. Master Bonnet. Look at that dude. Holy shit. That's going to make a good battle map for now until we can get some rhino armor. Can we make rhino armor? Suddenly I'm very on board with this. The, rhin the rhino's eating the lembus. Um, we only ate two and before it was full up, so that's pretty good. Interesting. So the stone quarry is fairly useless in the sense that it lets us gather particular chunks. I guess if you don't have certain chunks on the map, you can get some. Uh, but it also lets us gather coal chunks, which I assume are a method of fueling furnaces, things like that. So we should definitely always have some of these being gathered, but the actual quarry is probably better for cutting stone blocks in general. The issue is it's limited to the type of stone you build it on, right? So I don't know if there's a way to also tell what type of stone it is. I, I mean, I assume this area would be granite, or like, or near granite is obviously going to be granite. Um, and this area is slate, based on the fact that there's, you know, slate. Um, yeah, so this would, this would give granite, I assume, based on the fact that it is granite on the floor. So if we go ahead and get rid of these then, and build another quarry there, we could just dig up granite blocks directly from the earth, or at least quarry granite blocks. Holy shit, look at it. That's so ridiculous. That's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. Bonnet successfully tamed the rhinoceros and named it Peter. That's two. We've done it, team. Two very, very powerful rhino. This is so cool. Right, tame that one as well. Um, so this is going to be incredibly good. So we need to actually make it so that they are trained, though. I'm going to get the dog back training animals as well. Simply because we're not getting them tamed enough. We, we are, we're spending too much time actually trying to uh, trying to tame wild animals and not have time training them to be mountable and, and, you know, use them in battle and things like that. Oh my god, look at this. So apparently, there is arcane bandits, people who have stolen magical powers from our friends, the Blue Plain Covenant. Who the fuck are the Blue Plain Covenant? Um, follows the states... Uh, Blue Plane... Blue Plane Covenant are these boys up here. Apparently, these they've stolen their magic. Look at this. Rewards. Mage spell. Summon minion. Technomancer spell. Sabotage. Mage spell. Transfer mana. This sounds like it could be incredibly good. The value of it is 4,560, but to us, it's worth so much more because it's actually going to teach our boy Bonnet some magic. I feel like we've got to do it. I feel like we've got to send a, a big old squad to go and take him out here. Let's craft some armor before we do it, though. Let's send them in fully armored and ready to go. Um, what do we want, then? We want... Uh, let's go to this one here. Blacksmith's Forge. Let's make... I don't want to make royal armor for them. That seems a bit much, but we will make full plate. Um, gauntlets, boots... Wait, full plated or... Oh, right, this one has, I guess, slightly better. You know what? If it's only 10 more steel, I'd rather make these if they're going to last better. Death Mask. Yeah, that sounds cool. Um, we could make just brigandines or something like that. Uh, this should be fine, though. So he's already fully armored. He... So Moss needs a helmet and some armor. I assume he also needs this. So I'm going to make three copies of the gauntlets and the boots. Two copies of the steel armor. Uh, one death mask, because we've already got one. And then just churn out a shit ton of steel, I guess. Hey, there we go. We apparently got some uh, steel gauntlets of possibility. Um, maximum hit points. Plus 10 melee damage a second. Well, guess who's going to get that? It's our DPS boy. Holy shit, this, this boy is going to hit so hard. What is his melee damage right now? Can we see it in his bio? Okay, there we go. So 32.89 times 91. Uh, divided by 2. Why is it reduced so that so much? Uh, melee damage. Average of all attacks, 32. That's incredible. Um, skills is giving a massive bonus as well. This is so good. This is insanely powerful. Um, melee hit chance times cooldown. So his hit chance is actually fairly low. Um, cooldown seconds, 2. Point. Yeah, that man, that's crazy. 
10.15 compared to, let's take uh, Deep Sea for example and see what his melee DPS is. 6.56. Yeah, this dude's going to hit like a goddamn truck compared to our other colonists there. Bearing in mind, he's also got 16 melee as well, whereas this dude's only got 11. Don't get me wrong, that's still very, very good. But Jesus, this boy's going to hit like a goddamn... Especially if we get any more enchanted armor. What in the shit is this? Uh, Hypercharged in case steel gauntlets of cycle. Right, so they give accuracy. Oh my god, they give an absurd amount of accuracy. Alright, fair enough. So you get those then. Oh, did, wait, did he already have gauntlets? Oh shit, I think we gave this dude... Maybe making him more accurate would be better um do we want to give him melee damage per second and melee hit oh they already give hit chance is hit chance the same as accuracy with melee though or is that long is that is that ranged i assume it's ranged since it's also got aiming time sure we'll give him to patches the wimp in that case um or maybe moss does it affect magic i have absolutely no idea uh deep sea you know what you can have those then you're going on this mission anyway so you might as well have them Speaking of which, we've got another pair of boots here. We did make some boots that just had aim time on them, but this one gives more DPS, more... Oh my god, this is so absurd. Um, I almost feel like these enchantments are too frequent. I feel like they're a little bit too OP, so I might actually tweak them myself. I haven't changed any of the mod settings, uh, so we're just playing with the default mod experience, but I almost feel like they're a little bit too strong, you know? Um, maybe it's determined by your crafter and things like that too, but if we take a look at this dude's... I was on the right tab there. Um, 10.3 still. I almost feel like it's not working in that case. Seeing as we just gave him some more gear that gave him plus whatever DPS. Uh, in fact, we can just double check. Uh, gear, let's go steel boots. What do you guys think? Is this is this even working? Uh, seeing as it's supposed to give plus 10 melee damage per second, plus 20, 124%. Maybe that doesn't take into account gear? No, it's definitely taking into account gear. Um, we can see there. That's really strange. Giving up another plus 10%. Ah, maybe it's percentage then, rather than a flat bonus. I was going to say, if it was a flat bonus, that would be absurd. This dude would be up to like 40 melee damage right now. That makes more sense. I still think it's a little bit OP, the amount of infusions we get. Like, he's just about to finish something else. And funnily enough, it is also infused. Um, small death mask. Movement speed, market value. It's not massive. Seriously? Grizzly bear self-tamed? I'm so glad I caught that on the fucking clip. Otherwise, you guys would be like, oh, I don't believe that grizzly bear was self-tamed. Um, bonnet? Here's your choice. Rhino, grizzly bear mount. Or, apparently, armored boar. What do we think? Um, this is so fucking cool. Uh, obviously, we're going to train it to be released in combat. So, what animals have we got right now, then? We've got a wild boar, a labrador, two rhino, and a grizzly bear. Unbelievable. So, I feel like for our next bit of research, if we want to really build something that's going to last, the dwarven fortress, the grand gate, all of this seems very, very appropriate. I feel like dwarven fortification is going to be the strongest out of all of them, right? So we'll go for that one. We won't bother with elven fortifications because I feel like I want to keep our sort of consistent scheme to it. Oh man, is the next Lembus harvest almost ready? We've got some that are ready. Okay, I don't know why they're harvesting at strange times. And we'll finish things off to today because apparently we've massively overran here with Moss getting better at healing. Um, heal the wounds of the target, and then we can go for heal efficiency, decreases the mana cost. I don't think that matters too much anyway, seeing as we're probably going to be using it out of combat. Um, heal versatility, increase the maximum number of wounds that can be healed per spell by one per level. Or heal power, increase the amount each wound is healed by three points per level. I feel like this one's the most appropriate. Um, if we can get a very, very good heal, it might be the difference between saving someone's life. Healing multiple wounds is not going to be nearly as good as healing one wound to a very efficient degree. You know, if we manage to heal a very deep axe wound or something in, in the head and we save somebody's life with that, I feel like it's a, it's a bit more appropriate. All right, that's cool. I, I think we've got uh, a lot of good progress this episode. Learned about the Lembus, stole someone's soul, went on a nice quest. Next episode, we're going out to grab some magic. We've tamed a grizzly bear. We've tamed a rhino. We've built a shit ton of armor. What more could you want from Medieval Rimworld? And let's give a shout out to all of the insane top tier level patrons making this series possible. Big to Timmy, Zachary Harris, Tom Terrier 18, Harik, Lucas Holting, Sean Thornton, Lawrence, Haydock, Sidini, Necrofilin, Sunakurato, Facundo Vasquez, I'm the Lizard King, Josh Lindine Tesla, Michael Mullen, Tyler Birch, Powers Percy, Logan Thorne, Conspired C, Orcs Wolf, Average Gamer 419, Escape, and Jackson Woodman. Thank you all for your support on Patreon. Thank you for keeping the channel alive. And a big shout as well to Nathaniel Lindbergh, Euphrates, Jimmy, Quasar Fox, Jack Allen, Gabriel Van Ders, Llewellyn Thomas, Nathan Flores, Yuan DeVries, Don Connie 2 and 7, Zet McDougall, Joseph. Fear. Jordan Campbell, Harry McGowan, Will Wade, Chris, Sir Thor the Swede, The Sage, Asero, Nick, Fraser Brennan, Kevin Saunders, Betamus Max, The Insane Pickle, Adam Person, Igor Kozak, Haji Dumar, Noah Gallimore, Panther Pearl, and Alpha Scuff.